I mean, historically, uh, I think Islam continues the belief of the Jewish people that one God. I mean, Jewish prophets did not conceive the idea of two or three people in one Godhead. You're confused because we don't believe there's more than one God, number one. Number two, if I go to the Old Testament, the one God of Israel is not all of the Quran because the one God of Israel, you'll find in the Old Testament, he is depicted as being more than one person, even though he's one God. Just the Old Testament, not even New Testament, I can show you that. Okay. So, you want me to show you that? Yeah, I mean, if, if you have those at the fingertips. Sure, I, like I do. First of all, let's go to Genesis 18 and open it up for you. Okay, so now when we open 18, I want you to pay attention. Who Abraham sees? Then the Lord appeared to him by the terebinth trees of Mamre as he was sitting in the tender in the heat of the day. So he lifted his eyes and looked and behold, three men were standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran from the tender to meet him and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. Please let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. And I will bring a morsel of bread that you may refresh your hearts. After that, you may pass by in as much as you have come to your servant. Okay, so they are strangers, but Abraham is saying he is a servant to them. Yeah, no, but you haven't finished it yet. You, you stop. It says, they the said, Lord appeared. Okay. The Lord, the word here is Jehovah. And he saw three men. And these three men ate food, right? C can you scroll up? I, I want to no, just... No, no, hey, read the six down. Read six. Abraham hurried into the tent to Sarah and said, quickly, make ready three measures of fine meal. Knead it and make cakes. And Abraham ran to the herd, took a tender and good calf, gave it to a young man, and he hasn't to prepare it. So he took butter and milk and the calf, which he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree as they ate. They ate, right? Yeah, they eat. Yeah. Okay. So you see, three men, they eat, right? Yeah. Now read 9 to 14. We're not done yet. This is a long one, like I said. Then they said to him, Where is Sarah, your wife? He said, Here in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Oh, it's a blessing. Okay. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, well advanced in age, and Sarah had passed the age of childbearing. Therefore, Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I have grown old, shall I have pleasure, my Lord, being old also? And the Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh, saying, surely, sh shall I surely bear a child since I am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? Oh, okay. At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. So are you paying attention? Because we're not done yet. We still are going to go 15 to 22. But before we do, don't scroll too fast, Steve. Go back up, 14 and 15. Scrolling too fast. Okay, right there. Do you see... The Lord is speaking to Abraham and he's saying to him, I will come back and visit you next year and she's going to give birth to a son. So okay. the Lord shows up, three men appear, they can, eat can food. I, can, I, can I interrupt? Uh, if, this, if this question isn't trivial, can I ask you one thing? Is the Lord here Adonai or Yahweh? In no, it's Yahweh. It's all capital. is yod Hey vav Hey jehovah well, That's the Hebrew word. So the three men appear and you'll see that one of the men speaking, who's a man, who ate food is Jehovah. It's going to get clear. Now read 15 to 22. Good. I mean, it's clear from the verse, right? It says... These yeah, but I want you to... So you don't come back and say, no, 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 it's not clear. Because if you read all the way down, it says that two of the men leave. The men leave too. But that one man stayed behind who's Jehovah. And Abraham is now asking him, well, if you find 50, will you destroy it? So I want you to read it with your own eyes. So when I ask a question, you're not going to say, no, 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 no. So read 15 down to 22. But Sarah denied it saying, I did not laugh. For she was afraid. And he said, No, but you did laugh. Then the men rose from there and looked towards Sodom, and Abraham went with them to send them on the way. And the Lord said, Shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing, since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him? For I have known him in order that he may command his children and his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord do, to do the righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. And the Lord said, Because the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and because their sin is very grave, I will go down now and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry against it that has come to me. And if not, I will know. Now, before you move on, before you 22, what did Jehovah say? He's going to go where next? I'm going to go down where? Sodom and Gomorrah. So Jehovah's on earth saying, Now, uh, Abraham, I'm now going to go down to Sodom to see if what they sa said about it is true. Then I will know. Now, remember this, so there were three men, right? Yeah, yeah, three, exactly. Okay, so now Jehovah said, I'm going to go down because Jerusalem was above Sodom. I'm going to go down to Sodom. Now, read 22. Let him read 22. Okay, then the men turned away from there and went towards Sodom, but Abraham still stood before the Lord. Okay, now here's my question before you re yeah. read the rest. Before you read the rest, hold on. If there are three men, and one of the three men is Jehovah, and here it says the men went to Sodom and Gomorrah, but Abraham remained behind to talk to Jehovah. 
So if Jehovah is one of the three men, but he stays behind because Abraham's continued to talk to him, that means only two men showed up at Sodom initially, right? Yeah. Logically. Only two because the third man stayed behind, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Now we're going to come back to 22 because now I want you to show him Genesis 19 verses 1 to 3. How many men originally showed up at first? The two angels. Oh, angels. Okay. Came How many? Two angels. So that means two of the three men were angels, right? Yeah, ob yes, obviously, yeah. So where's the third man? He is talking with Abraham in the tent, right? But who was that third man? Jehovah. Yeah, now go back and read. Now let's see what Jehovah and Abraham say. Then the men turned away from there and went to Sodom. But Abraham still stood before the Lord. And Abraham came near and said, Would you also destroy the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there were 50 righteous within the city, you would also destroy the place. But notice he's talking to this man saying, will yeah. you destroy them? Yeah. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. yeah. So uh, far be it from you to do such a thing as this, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous should be as the wicked. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Any so doubt this is God? Before you read 26. Yeah. Only God is a judge of all the earth. Only God destroys the wicked and saves the righteous. So you, there's no doubt Abraham's talking to God, right? He's talking to him face to face here, obviously. You got it. Now read 26 to 33. So the Lord said, if I find in Sodom 50 righteous within the city, then I will spare all the place for this. So sins. if I find in Sodom, meaning Jehovah is going to go where next? Uh, where is he going to go next? Remember he said, I'm going to go down to Sodom, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so he goes, so when I get there, if I find in Sodom, me personally, I'm going to go there personally. And if I okay. find 50, I'll spare it, right? Okay. So the two angels are still there. And Abraham, and Yahoo is saying, I will go there. and Yes, I'll meet them later. You're getting okay. it, man. Now read 27 to 33. I won't stop you. Now you got to keep reading. Then Abraham answered and said, Indeed, now I am I who am but dust and ashes have taken it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose there were five less than the 50 righteous. Would you destroy all the city for lack of five? So he said, if I find there 45, I will not destroy it. Okay, he's negotiating. And he spoke to him yet again and said, suppose there should be 40. Okay. I will not do it for the sake of 40. Then he said, let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. Suppose 30 should be found there. Okay. So he said, I will not do it if I find 30 there. And it comes to one, I guess. Yeah. Well, we'll keep reading. going to see because 33 is the key. I want you to keep reading. Okay. So he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of 20. Okay. So let not the Lord be angry and I will speak. But once more, suppose 10 should be found there. And he said, I will not destroy it for the sake of ten. So the Lord went his way as soon as he had finished speaking with Abraham, and Abraham returned to his place. Oh, the Lord went his way, so the Lord stayed behind. Now, where was he going next? Sodom and Gomorrah. So the Lord's going to be on earth, right? Yeah. Okay, now open up Genesis 19 for him and go to 24. Is there any reason why the other two were called angels? Because they are angels. They're messengers of Jehovah. But this third one is called Jehovah, right? Yeah. I remember it said, Jehovah said he's going to go down to Sodom, right? I mean, I heard Christians say the three people who came were... Can Jesus. be. Yes. Yeah. It can be the Trinity because the Son and the Spirit are the Father's messengers. Angels meaning messengers. But I don't need to make that point to prove my case. All I need to show you is that Jehovah's on earth as a man eating food. And then this point, verse 24. Then the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from, from, the, Lord of the, from the Lord out of the heavens. Okay, so now I'm please. confused. Yeah. We just established Jehovah's on earth. As a man eating food, speaking to Abraham face to face as a man, and then he's going to go down to Sodom, right? So Jehovah's yeah. on earth, right? Yeah. And but he yeah. brought fire from Jehovah out of heavens. So you have Jehovah on earth who brought fire from Jehovah out of heavens. So there's a Jehovah in heaven and a Jehovah on earth. Can you explain that to me? And the Lord rained brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Lord out of the heavens. So it's like then the Yehovah rain, brimstone, and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from the Yehovah out of the heavens. Is that the yeah. one? So Jehovah's in heaven. So from the heavens, Jehovah rain fire at the request of the Jehovah's on earth. So there are two Yehovah's in the one in the one sentence. Right? Well, or you can say there's one Jehovah who's more than one person, two persons who are the one Jehovah. And to prove to you that Jehovah's on earth, read 27 for him. Genesis 19. I, if, if it's too much, I want the Hebrew version of it. Oh, I'll open up the view. Can you read it? I know how Yehovah looks like, you know, the world. Okay, we'll open up now, but I want you to read 27. I'm going to give it to you. Hold on, just read 27. And Abraham went early in the morning to the place where he had stood before the Lord. So how much clearer could it be that Jehovah's on earth because Abraham went to the location on earth where Jehovah stood before him, right? Yeah, 
I mean, the one on the Jehovah. Right? Yeah, yes. Let me give it to you. Okay, I'm going to give you 24. Since you say you know the Hebrew words, Yod, Hey, Bav, Hey, or Wow, Hey. Okay. Okay, now, can you see the screen? Uh, okay, yeah, there are two Yahweh's. Okay. You see it? Yeah, yeah. Now, this is Old Testament. You just told us Old Testament agrees with Islam, the one of Savallah. We all believe God is one, but one what? He's not one person. Because here I just showed you Jehovah's on earth as a man who brings fire from Jehovah out of heavens. But since Jehovah's one, that means it can't be two Jehovah's. So the one Jehovah God is more than one person. It's clearly, yeah, it's saying like there are two Yahuas, uh, the Yahweh. Yeah. Okay, okay so Yahweh out of the heavens. Yep. And one of them is on earth eating food as a man, appearing as a man. So if in the Old Testament, Jehovah can appear as a man and eat food as a man, why would it be hard then for Jehovah to become a man and be born as a man and experience human limitation and still be God? You know, can't we say it's omnipresence or in this verse? Okay, so then why would you then say that Jehovah brought fire from Jehovah out of heavens? Because if it's simply omnipresence, that's redundant to say Jehovah on earth, who's also in heaven, is bringing fire from himself out of heaven while he's on earth. That doesn't make sense. Yeah, it's too much complication. Yeah, okay. You got it. Especially when one Jehovah is on earth as a man, and there's the other Jehovah in heaven. So that means there's one on earth asking the other in heaven to bring down the fire. Hmm. Okay. So, I mean, I can give you more, but the whole point is, Number one, the Old Testament agrees with the New Testament, not with the Quran, that the one God is more than one person, though he's one God. Number two, the thing said about this one God, the Quran disagrees. For example, you do not believe that Allah is a spiritual father and you are his spiritual seed. Not physically, because we don't believe God is physical who has sex. You don't believe that. You don't call, call Allah my father or our father and we are the sons of Allah. That's forbidden in Islam and the Quran. But the Old Testament in agreement with us says that Jehovah is a spiritual father. And when he enters into relationship with people, they become his spiritual children. But you don't believe that. We do. And that's in the Old Testament. For example, Deuteronomy 14 verse 1. Show it to him. I mean, the reason we don't say father is because like people get misguided into thinking that he's a real father. So. Okay. Well, my friend, at the time of Moses and the time of Jesus, there are pagans who are misguided who thought, that the gods could father them sexually, but that didn't stop the prophets from calling God father. So why should it stop you? Deuteronomy 14, verse 1. So uh, you are the children of the Lord your God. Ye shall not cut yourselves, nor make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. So are you guys the children of Allah your God? Um, I, am, I think there is no verse saying we are the children of God. So can you say right now, so you're recorded so everyone can hear you. Allah, you are my father. And we are your children. That's not there in the Quran. That's not how we are taught. Yeah. But it's in the Old Testament and it's in the New Testament. Here it says, You are the children of the Lord your God. And in John 1 12 13, it says, To those who received Jesus, to those who believed in his name, he gave them the right, the power to become children of God, born of God. So Old Testament, New Testament seems to be agreeing over against you. Now, the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, do you believe the Holy Spirit is God? Uh, we don't have the concept of Holy Spirit. It's just a power from God. Yeah. Well, according to most Muslims, Holy Spirit is the angel Gabriel. Do you agree with that or you disagree? Some believe it. I believe it's simply an energy from God. Yeah. Energy. Oh. Okay. Okay. So, well, even though the Quran doesn't agree with that, but if, if, do you believe this energy has emotions, can be heard? No. It's like fire and water. Okay. Energy. So it can't be heard, right? Yeah. Okay. Now, go to Isaiah 63, 10 for him, but show him in the New King James. Uh, but they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy and he fought against them. Okay. You just said the energy can't, you know, doesn't have emotions. But here it says God's Holy Spirit was grieved. He was hurt. Yeah. yeah it says that, yes. Yeah. So, but then that means if the Holy Spirit can be hurt, he has emotions. So he's not an energy, he's a person, right? And this is uh, Old Testament. This is actually Jewish Bible. It's not New Testament. Uh... Well, I would take the meaning of this was as God himself grieving. No, because it would have said they rebelled and grieved God. It says his Holy Spirit. Oh, okay, his Holy Spirit. Oh, okay, then his Holy Spirit is like a separate entity. Okay. But it's it has emotions. But you said the Holy Spirit of God doesn't have emotions. Yeah. Yes, I said it. But, yeah. the, but the Old Testament agreement with the New Testament says the Holy Spirit of God does have emotions. You can hurt him, anger him, and displease him. Okay. I okay, so it's, it's written like that. I can't do anything, right? So, yeah. 
not only that, when the Holy Spirit speaks, which you don't believe the Spirit speaks because he's an energy, he is God who speaks. Open up for him, 2 Samuel 23. Now these are the last words of David. Thus says David, the son of Jesse. Thus says the man raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me, and his word was on my tongue. The Spirit of the Lord spoke by me. Okay. So the Holy and Spirit it, used David's mouth to speak? Yeah, and his word was on my tongue. Whose tongue was on David's tongue? Whose word? The Spirit of the Lord. He so could just spirit, have said Lord, but he said Spirit of the Lord. Okay. Yeah, it could have said the Lord spoke by me, because not the Lord here. It's the Lord's Spirit that the Lord sent. So the Spirit is speaking through David and giving David the words to speak, right? Yeah, he made it complicated, yeah. Yeah, but then read three, who speaks? The God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke to me. He who rules over men might, must be just, ruling in the fear of God. Okay, now, uh, I, I'm confused, friend. In verse 2, it says, the Spirit of the Lord is speaking, and it's the Spirit's word on my tongue. But then it says in 3, the God of Israel said, the rock of Israel spoke. So who actually spoke? It looks like they both are the same, like in his Ah, uh, The Spirit of God is God, although he belongs to God. That's why we're Trinitarian. You got it. You answered it. This is Old Testament. I didn't read New Testament. This is the Jewish Bible, and it sounds perfectly like the New Testament.